engine is missing. Fuel tank is off. After a little battle, here we go. Here's our wheel. Alright, quick run. And so the engine is on the bench, not in the go-kart, because today what I'm going to do is remove the governor, oil sensor, and everything else that could prevent this thing from running to its maximum potential. So let's get this going, and let me show you how to remove a governor. Uh, this is a 10 mil, drain it, and obviously you might want to remove the plug to make sure there is nothing in there. I know I don't have anything in the engine, but right here on top, what we have is all six 10 millimeter 10 millimeter bolts, I'm sorry. Since this engine is pretty much new, I'm really, really hoping this gasket will be okay. If I can actually pop it open. There we go. Yes, our gasket is good, perfectly reusable. Excellent. So, yeah. Please make sure you pay attention to this uh, plastic wheel. I guess uh, it's very easy for it to come out when you're pulling the cover. And I will put you out of timing. So the governor wheel is this thing right there, that black looking thing. Some of them come white, depending on the manufacturer of the engine. Uh, predators will come white, and this one is apparently uh, black. But in, at the end, it's exactly the same thing. Uh, this is what we have to remove. In order to remove this arm, obviously we have to remove all the components that are connected to it. Uh, I would love to keep this portion, we'll see if I can, for now I'm not going to touch it, simply I still want to sort of use the limiter uh, with the original cable so I can limit my son whenever I need to. Well first, let's pull the springs off of it, we need all those pliers work best on that. Once we pop this off, use a screwdriver to pry it a little bit open and slide it off once again. And slide it off. There we go. Oh, it won't fall because there is a cotter pin in here. Perfect. Once we have the arm, just basically remove it. Uh, if we remove the pin, and we try to slide it down, most likely it will not clear. So just like in many videos, next step is to cut this off. So let's go get it cut off. One thing I totally forgot to mention is this engine does not have an oil sensor, which is kind of surprising. We should be able to remove this arm without any issues since it's shorter. Gotta use some force. After cutting the arm much shorter, obviously it is easier for you to pull it out. I still had to use a little bit of persuasion using a screwdriver to get it through the hole. And make sure that once you come come off, off I mean once you pull the arm off, right in that spot you will not have any washers. The washers, you have to pull them out because they usually get stuck, they're full of oil. There's three of them. If you, don't ha if you have less, search the engine because one of them would fall somewhere. Make sure you have three. So once we have the arm out, next thing we have to do is grab any of those pliers, grab this little plastic and just slowly remove it. 
make sure the washer that's on here comes with it as well because you don't want to lose that in the engine as well and if you guys see on the bottom of it there's like a c-clip around that pin it looks like a c-clip this is what we have to knock the heck out with a screwdriver pretty much pry it open as much as you can so that way we can actually pull everything off so i got myself a small one we'll try with a small one and a little bit bigger one both of them seem to be pretty sharp so hopefully that will make it a little bit easier with a punch tool i was able to spread the ring a little bit into the sides This is pretty much as, as open as I can get. Let's get another pick tool so I can hook it and pull it out. After a little battle, there we go. Here's our wheel. This little thing is responsible for all the issues that we're having as far as RPMs not going above 3000 or whatever is the rev limit on this engine. There's a washer right there, which we have to remove. Don't forget to remove that washer. Step Next step is to find a nut, uh, actually a bolt that we can put in here. Something similar to a bolt like this. Obviously a little bit bigger. We would have to make some threads and screw a bolt in with an uh, o-ring or uh, like one of those rubber washers whatever it is so that oil doesn't spill out of the engine so I managed to find an, uh, a nut laying around it wasn't in the bin so I can't really tell I mean I could check I'll try to check what uh, what size this is but I managed to find a tab that actually will work with it the way the best way to check is basically line them up together and they seem to be spot on great right on right, the bolt is big enough to actually go in there need threads so this is the worst process of the whole thing I will believe I hate doing this but hey, we gotta do it let's grab some grease apply that grease on the end so this will be able to pick up some of the debris that falls in to the motor there we go let's start on this Make sure it's nice and even. And straight. So applying a little bit of pressure. Start turning. You can see it's already turning in. Now I'm going to Check it out a lot more just to see, pick up uh, some of the debris that might have fallen in. Yeah, there's plenty of it. So I'm gonna try to extract that with a pixel. There you go. It's off. So our next step in this procedure would be to find a nice o-ring for a bolt and Loctite. Get that Loctite in there and that bolt. What I will also do, just as a pre uh, precautionary thing, I'll, I'll get compressed air, feed it from the bottom and blow everything out. We have a simple tool like this, compressed air. Uh, I will feed it into uh, the hole that we just made. Obviously the reg is inside and once it's in, Just as a precaution, um, obviously was, the grease took most of the de debris out, but just as a precautionary thing, I want to make sure everything is nice and clean so we don't have issues. Pull the rag out, rag is clean, 
it means we have no debris inside the motor. Now, as far as Loctite, don't be afraid to dump a lot of it. Make sure it's nice and tight. Obviously, we don't want to strip the... Yeah, this is good. We don't want to stri uh, strip the threads. So that, that's basically our go governor is removed. Next thing on the list will be just to quickly reassemble the engine. It is very time consuming, but definitely worth all the issues and troubles you're going through because ungoverned engine is a healthy engine, at least in my opinion. For this particular run, I decided I'm gonna actually buckle up just to be on the safe side. So our top speed was 36 miles an hour. Uh, so we actually beat uh, the 35 mile goal by one mile. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty satisfied with the result. Obviously we don't have any more up top RPMs. Well, she moves. Hell yeah, 10 mile an hour difference from what it used to be to what it is now. I'm fine with it. 36 miles an hour is a great number uh, right now. My goal was 35, so we are one mile above what I was hoping to get. Uh, I kept all the original uh, limiting factors of this thing, so that way I can still make sure that it doesn't go more than 15 miles an hour as intended per OEM. Uh, because the throttle will not open, obviously, as much. It is blessed to drive. It is a little bit harder to and more time consuming to actually take the governor out. As you guys have seen, it is a pain sometimes to get the little uh, C-clip from the governor wheel in order to pull that out and also you have to remember to have all the washers out of there otherwise the engine will seize up uh, we had a fresh oil change everything is great the goka runs perfect uh, starts right away made the pipe shorter so now way i can probably clear the tailgate and the pickup truck the only thing i need to do is uh, do some more further testing uh, and save money for the stage 2 which stage 2 kit includes the flywheel, which I have not changed, simply because I want to go stage two, and that comes in the kit. So we're going to get a high lift camshaft, we're going to get a flywheel, 22 pound springs, and some other things I have in my head that I want to change on this thing. Of course, we will change the rod as well. I don't know if I should go a little step a little bit further and just get the piston too, but I will, do, I will just need to do some research on that. Well, that's pretty much it for this episode. Uh, stay tuned, I will try to get uh, wheels, tires and the drift combo and see if this thing will actually drift. But for the time being, thanks for watching Superior Drift Garage. Ho I hope you guys like the content, uh, share, subscribe, comment. I want you guys to comment as much as you can 
simply so I know what to do next. What's the next step I should take? Maybe I missed something. Maybe I didn't see something. I didn't do my research enough. I'm just a human. If you have any suggestions, please give me, uh, leave a comment, let me know, and I'll try to fix it. I'll try to change it. Maybe add something. Either way, uh, subscribe to my channel and other new subscribers. Thanks for coming on board. I really, really appreciate it. It's a huge motivation. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing as much as I possibly can. And until next time, thank you for watching Superior Joe Garage.